A bit of a warning, and you were hanging your hat on China Thank when you. we spoke to you in Davos. What's changed? Where is it that we're going to see perhaps the, the biggest material slowdown 2019? No, overall, we had a record year in 18. We grew top line 8%, bottom line 20, and hit a margin of 10.8, the highest in the history of our company. And the growth drivers in 18 was North America, China, and online, and I think you'll continue to see those. Online came out with 36% growth for the year, China 23, and North America 17. So while we're seeing a slight slowdown, uh, also partially due to uh, supply issues, we'll still see a very, very solid 2019 with a bottom line growth of 10 to 14%. So we're quite optimistic about a 19. Not the same growth of 18, but still very stellar. Uh, Mr. Rosted, you've said that uh, 2019 will see Europe return to slight growth. I'm wondering how much of that is because of a gloomy consumer picture in Europe and how much is down to your product mix? No, I think you need to be careful of, of, of blaming everybody else. There's no doubt that the European market has slowed down. But uh, there's also no doubt that uh, we need to do a better job in Europe, as we articulated in previous interviews. So we believe that we can turn it around. We believe it's very much in our own destiny. The European market economy of the GDP has been pretty much 1.5 plus minus for the last many years. So I think it would be inappropriate to do so. And we believe we have a strong product line coming out with a lot of very cool launches that will help us grow in the European market in the second half. Well, what is going to be the biggest mega, the biggest new mega trend for you? Because I, I don't know whether it's disingenuous, but we've written that you're in the twilight of retro footwear boom. So if you're in the twilight zone, Casper, how do you get me into the light? No, I don't think we're in the twilight zone. We think that overall sport is a market that will continue to grow in glo globally. Casual wear will continue to grow. So we don't think there's going to be one single solution. We're thinking that we're in a very sweet spot. If you look upon you know, the, the core growth drivers, you know, we double our econ business in two years. We double our North American business in the last three years, and we double our China business over the last four years. So we still think that we're in a very attractive market. You know, right now, with sport being two-thirds of our business and what we call our regionals business, so sport inspired being one-third, and that will continue to be a you know, very, very interesting and attractive market for us. Yeah, so you say sport being two-thirds of your business, Casper. Uh, Do you see uh, more of a move into sports performance and away from fashion, or is the mix going to stay the same? We think the overall mix will stay the same, but the sport business is core to whom we are, and we are seeing a tremendous interest of our sports business through the large franchise we have, whether it's football, running, or American football. And uh, also the move to casual wear as a balance will continue to be there. People want to wear casual wear. They want to wear you know, cool sneakers when they go to work, and we are seeing that trend. And really the transaction vehicle is more and more, more, and more going to be online. Our online app that we delivered last year that was downloaded more than 7 million times. It's a tremendous asset for our company. So we believe uh, that's going to be, you know, continue to be the growth driver of our company. Casper, I want to bring you back to one of the 2018 issues. Uh, the producers here, we were talking this morning, Drake and Travis Scott, I mean, they undoubtedly hold, hold the captive audiences that, that you sell to. They had a hit song last year where they referred to checks over stripes, i.e. Nike over Adidas. And Drake also had a line where he said, don't wear no 350s round me. Have you, in the latter part of 2018, I mean, that's a direct swipe at you. This is one of your brand ambassadors. Are you going to review your Kanye West deal. I mean, this is building up as something which is perhaps a headwind for you? No, not at all. We have been very, very happy with the relationship we have with Kanye West and will continue to be so. And what we've done is we introduced more and more you know, pieces of footwear, footwear into the market, not only the 350, but the 500 and 700. We'll continue to do so in 2019 and on. And we believe that the current relationship we have with Kanye is very successful. We are very happy with it, and he's very happy with it. So right now, we're just you know, trying to make certain that we keep bringing really hot, very scarce footwear into the market to drive the brand, and at the same time, driving volume approximately, you know, predominantly around the 350 shoe. Yeah, on that point, Casper, what sort of growth are you expecting in 2019 in Kanye's Yeezy line? So as I'm certain you know that we don't disclose the growth of a similar, singular, singular product line, but the Kanye business is less than double-digit for us. So while it's important, 
from a business standpoint, it's really important from a brand building standpoint. And Kanye is not an American brand. Kanye is a global brand, and the EC is a global brand. So we're looking upon it as a brand driver more than really a, you know, a business driver for us. And that will be the case also in 19. But as I said, we're very happy with the Kanye relationship. Maybe shifting a tone, one topic that I'd like to bring into the, you know, to this interview is that one of the brands we've been working hard on turning around has been Reebok. Our original target was to turn Reebok back to profitability mm. by 2020. We managed to do, do that by 2018. So we have done a 150 million profit improvement over the last two years. Tremendous progress in Reebok. And now we need to get Reebok into a more growth mode while continuing to expand the profitability of the brand. Casper, well, well, well tilted. Uh, done dexterously, like the CEO that you are, to, to move the agenda. Let's move the agenda back to Brexit. We're getting lines this morning. Hard Brexit risk rising. People are saying, "What is Brexit? What is the Brexit risk to you, really, in terms of tariffs?" We're seeing hard Brexit tariffs being put out here. What would a hard Brexit mean for you? And what are you planning to do? So, of course, we have already taken precautionary measures and build warehousing and distribution infrastructure in the UK. Uh, of and uh, I think that there's two elements of the hard Brexit. One is the economic you know, impact in the UK, but it will also have an impact on the overall, I would say, already slow economy in Europe. Uh, we don't believe it will have any impact on our guidance for 19 and 20, but there's no doubt it will have an impact on the long-term growth opportunity in the European economy and in the UK. So with us really being the manufacturer of sneakers and T-shirts, we are not in the biggest limelight of politicians. And we still believe that people want to buy cool sporting products and casual wear. So if you look upon my agenda, the Brexit is not the top of my agenda. It is driving the digital agenda within the Adidas company. Just one final question to circle back to Europe, Casper. What yeah. more do you need to do to improve uh, your, your growth in Europe? No, very simply, we need to drive a stronger sports channel in Europe to make certain that we sell more sp sports products in Europe. I said before that two-thirds of our business uh, globally is sports products and one-third in Europe, and then one-third is uh, uh, casual-related. In Europe, it's 50-50. We need to have a stronger presence in the sporting goods uh, part of the market. And that's why we're heavily into, you know, investing into sporting assets. As I'm sure you know, we signed Arsenal as one of the leading premier clubs. So we have Arsenal along with Manchester United and seven other premier clubs. So we continue to invest very heavily into sport in Europe to make certain that we have a two-third, one-third you know, scenario in Europe.